Grace and peace be unto you. This is your Ak, Yehuda or Judah, Isaiah. So we are going to continue the series to prove over and over and over that the Jews are black. So now I want to go back inside the book, The Contendings of the Apostles. Okay, giving us the history, the history of the, the 12 apostles, um, where they went, who they taught the gospels to, and how they died. Okay, where they went, they traveled, the people or, or the nations that they taught, uh, some traveled all the way to India, all the way from India, all through Asia, the Asia Minor, all through what we, what we call the Middle East today, uh, up in Europe. Or down in Africa. Uh, in fact, um, in fact, uh, Matthew, the Apostle Matthew, he went to Africa. Okay, the Messiah uh, talked to Matthew in a vision, and he sent Matthew to Ethiopia. So we are going to go inside this book here, the Contenders of the Apostles. Okay, um, this book here, it gives us more information about, okay, about the apostles. Um, and also, uh, these writings were written around the same time as the four Gospels. As the Gospels in, in the New Testament, these writings were written around the same time. It is just these writings were not included in the Bible. That's it. But now let's go inside to see what it says concerning, again, concerning the Apostle Matthew and where he went and who he taught. And it says here, the Acts of St. Andrew or Matthew, which is Matthew, in the city of Kahanet. Okay, in the city of Kahanet or Kahanet, which is um, in Ethiopia. Okay, because the Messiah sent Matthew to Ethiopia to teach the Jews in Ethiopia. And did not Christ command his apostles to go to the lost sheep? There were many, many Jews living or dwelling in Ethiopia, which was Cush. So he sent Matthew to Cush to teach the Jews in Ethiopia. It says here, and then our Lord, which is Christ, he spoke unto Peter and commanded him to go to the city of Rome. And you can read about that also in the book of Acts in the, in the New Testament. He sent Peter to Rome. OK, and then it says, and he commanded Andrew to go to the city of Mia. And then it says, and he convinced or commanded Matthew to go to Mesa, which is located in India, which I think is in India. And then it says here, and Matthew unto the city of Kahanet. So he sent Andrew to India and Christ sent Matthew unto the city of Kahanet. Or Kahinat, which is Ethiopia. Okay, Ethiopia. In Cush, where many Jews was dwelling. Go to the lost sheep. Go to the lost sheep. So here we have a Kahinat high priest. Okay. In Ethiopia. And um, this high priest, his name was Yuri Ben Baruch. Yuri ben Baruch, okay, Baruch, a high priest in Ethiopia, okay, a real black Jew, Yuri ben Baruch, it says, Yuri ben Baruch, December the 21st, 1984, it says that he was a liqua or a liqua, Kahanet, okay, Kahanet, the same Location that Christ sent Matthew to go teach the Jews in Kahanet. It says he was a Kahanet high priest and the main leader. It says the main leader of the Ethiopian Jewish community for nearly 50 years. It says from the Italian 
occupation of Ethiopia and until his death. But it says that he was the main or one of the main leaders of the Ethiopian Jewish community. So you're talking about back in around the time of, of World War II. Okay, World War II. And this is when he was living. Okay, so once again, um, Ben Baruch, a, a Kohanet high priest. Okay, the same location that uh, Matthew went to. He was a high priest, the main leader of the Ethiopian Jewish community for nearly 50 years. It says, from the Italian occupation of Ethiopia and until his death, until his death. But no, these camps, they want to talk about the Hispanics, which are Europeans or of European descent and the, Mex and the Mexicans, when in fact the original Aztecs was black, the original Taino Indians were black, the original native Indians in, in North America, etc. were black. They want to talk about these peoples, but they don't focus on the Jews of Ethiopia, of Kush, as it is written in the Bible. Okay, as it is written in the Bible, we are going to prove and show that the Ethiopian Jews and they are called the Ethiopian Jews just as you are called American. Okay, they are called Ethiopians, but their bloodlines link them back to Jacob, Abraham, and Isaac. Just like you are called an American, just like the next brother may be called a Jamaican or somebody from Trinidad or a Trinidadian, etc. Okay, so yes, they are called Ethiopians because they, they live in Ethiopia. This is the reason why they are called Ethiopian Jews. But as you continue to watch this presentation, you will see that no Europeans converted the Jews of Ethiopia. Not one European converted the Jews of Ethiopia. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 11, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt, which is Mizraim, and from Petros or Patros, and from Cush. And Petros or Patros was located in what was called Upper Egypt, which is really Southern Egypt, which is really close to Cush, like, like right there at the borderline of Ethiopia or Cush. And Elephantine, Elephantine was located in Petros or what used to be called Petros or Petros. And Elephantine, it still exists today. You still have black Jews and black uh, Egyptians dwelling in Elephantine today. In fact, that's one of my goals is to travel to um, Elephantine. I, I'm actually uh, in, in contact with a, a travel agency um, here in the city. And I, I'm, my plan is to travel and, and do a tour uh, at Elephantine Island. Like you saw the brothers and sisters from America uh, on that video. So it says Petros and Cush. Okay, Petros and Cush. This is where God's people is located. Even to this day, they are in Petros, Elephantine, and they are in Ethiopia. You have the Danites, mostly Danites. You have Gadites. You have um, the tribe of Naphtali in Cush or Ethiopia. You have the tribe of Asher, the Asherites in Ethiopia. You have many tribes in Ethiopia, mainly, mainly the Danites, but also you have Zebulon. You have many tribes scattered in Ethiopia. So when you look at the Falasha Jews, right, which means Beta Israel, which means stranger, they was they was given that name, okay, by the local uh real black hermetic uh Ethiopians. Okay, but among the uh, uh the Falasha Jews, you also have some Gadites among the Falashas, you have some 
Asherites among the Philoshes. You have some Zebulonites among the Philoshes, etc. Not just the Danites, mostly Danites, but not, but, but not all Danites. Okay, not all Danites. So here, I am going to go inside my book here. The Hidden Truth the Hebraic Scrolls Tanakh with the commentary, okay? With commentary, okay? With the correct translation. A better translation than, than the uh, the KJV Masoretic. You see here it says the set apart scriptures for the assembly of Israel. Okay, so we're going to go inside this translation. I decided to use this translation today. So now I'm going to First Chronicles because now when we're dealing with First Chronicles, many people don't know that Ezra, the scribe Ezra, he wrote First Chronicles. Okay, in the captivity, Ezra was able to uh, go to all the leaders of all the tribes, okay, and speak to the elders of the tribes and, and speak to the, um, the princes of the tribes and get the genealogies of the tribes. But Ezra was not able to, um, to get the genealogy of the tribe of Dan because the tribe of Dan, they had migrated. To Ethiopia. In fact, they migrated some hundred years before um, the Assyrian captivity of the Northern Kingdom. They have migrated to Ethiopia. Okay, so uh, Ezra was not able to get the the genealogies from from the leaders of the tribes. This is how Ezra got the the genealogies uh, to write the Book of Chronicles. He went to all the leaders. Of the tribes, all the tribes, and he spoke to the elders, and they had the genealogies, and he got the genealogies, and this how, this is how he was able to uh, collect collect all the names from each tribe, from Simeon all the way to Judah, except the tribe of Dan. He was not able to to get the genealogy of the tribe of Dan because the tribe of Dan they had migrated. To Ethiopia. So now this is First Chronicles. Okay, I'm inside my book here. You can see right here. Okay, uh, a better translation, the Hebraic scrolls. All right, First Chronicles. In the Hebrew, it is pronounced uh, Debri Ha Yamim Aleph. Debri Ha Ha Yamim Aleph. Okay, Debri or Debre Debre Ha Yamim Aleph. First Chronicles in the Hebrew. And this book is excellent. I love this book because it also gives you great commentary. Okay. So let me show you right here. You see right here, all the names for Noah or Noah, Noah and Shem and Calm, etc. Now when we get to chapter two, first Chronicles chapter two, let me get to it right here. First Chronicles chapter two. You see right here, first Chronicles chapter two. Let me get set up here. First Chronicles chapter 2. It says here. These are the sons of Israel, Reuben and Shimeon, which is Simeon, Shimeon and Lewi, which is Levi and Yahuda, which is Judah and Yaakov, which is Issachar and Zebulon and Dan. You see that? And Dan. And Yosef, which is Joseph, and Benjamin, Benjamin, which is Benjamin, and Naphtali, and God, or God, God, which is Gad, and Asher, and Asher, okay? So, he gives you the name of the tribe of Dan also. He gives us the name, let me read it, let me read it again. These are the sons of Israel, Reuben, Shimeon, Lewi or Lewi, which is Levi, and Yehuda, and Yaakov, which is Issachar, and Zebulon, and Dan, and Dan, and Yosef, and Benjamin, which is Benjamin, and Naphtali, and it says, and God, or God, God, or Gad, is spelled G-A-W-D, and Asher. But I just want to show you that Dan, the tribe of Dan, is listed in First Chronicles. However... The sons and daughters of Dan, 
mainly the, the sons of Dan, is not mentioned in First Chronicles because Ezra was not able to go to the elders of the tribe of Dan to get the list of the tribe of Dan, or, or, or should I say the genealogies of the tribe of Dan, because the tribe of Dan had already migrated. But, however, Eldad the Danite, he had the genealogies or the copies of the tribe of Dan. Let's go inside the Jewish travelers in the, the Middle Ages. Okay, here we go here on page 14. Okay, Eldad the Danite is given the genealogy because the Danites had the records. They took the records with them when they, when they migrated, okay? So it says here, he gives the, the genealogy that Ezra uh, did not have. This is the reason why you don't see the genealogy uh, of the tribe of Dan in First Chronicles. However, he does mention Dan as one of the sons of Israel or, or Israel or, or Jacob, as I showed you. Okay, First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 1. He lists Dan as one of the sons, but he did not have the genealogies. Okay, the, the genealogies because the, the tribe of Dan, they took the genealogies with them when, when they migrated. Okay, so it says here, he says, he says right here, and this is my name, Eldad ben Mahali. So his real name is Eldad ben Mahali. Okay, Ben meaning the son of Eldad Ben Mahali, but he he is, he is also no, known as Eldad the Danite. So again, he says, and this is my name, Eldad Ben Mahali, Ben Ezekiel. He's given the breakdown of the genealogies. Ben Ezekiel, Ben Hezekiah, Ben Aluk, Ben Abner, Ben Shemaiah, Ben. Hata or Hata, uh, uh, Hata, Ben Hur, Ben Elkanah, Ben Halil, Ben Tobias, Ben Pedap, Ben Anan, Ben Na Naaman, Ben Tam, Ben Tammy, Ben Anam, Ben Gol, Gul, Ben Shalom, Ben Caleb, Ben Amram. Okay, so he go on and on. Ben Obadiah, Ben Abraham, Ben Joseph, Ben Moses, and he continues. Let's go up here. He continues to say, he says, uh, let me get myself right here. He says, Ben uh, Jacob, Ben Kapoor, Ben Ariel, Ben Asher, Ben Job, Ben Shalom, Ben Elihu, uh, Elu, Elihu, Ben Ahalab, Okay, he go on and on. Then he says, Ben um, Ashamak, Ben Hashem, Ben Dan, okay, Dan, Ben Jacob, okay, Ben Jacob, our father. You see that? Ben Jacob, where it says Ben the Dan and Ben Jacob. So he has the genealogies, okay? They had, the Danites had the genealogies. They had the records. But, the scribe, the, the, the Levite scribe, Ezra, he did not have the records. Because, like I said, the Danites had already migrated. But again, let's go back to First Chronicles. He listed Dan as one of the sons of Jacob. He just could not list the, list the genealogies because he did not have the genealogies in his possession. So he could not, he could not li list the genealogies of Dan. So let's go back. First Chronicles chapter two. You see this right here? Dan, as one of the sons of Israel, Reuben, uh, Shimei, Levi, Yehuda, Issachar, Zebulon, Dan. So he lists Dan in First Chronicles, but he did not have the genealogies. Okay, to include Dan in First Chronicles. If Ezra would ha uh, would have had the genealogies of the tribe of Dan in his possession, the tribe of Dan would have been listed also in First Chronicles. Now let me show you how ignorant these camps are. They say 
that the the Falasha Jews in Ethiopia, they call them Hamites, right? They say they are Hamites. But let me show you how ignorant and unlearned these Negroes in these camps are. They say that the Falasha Jews are com converts. When the Falasha Jews was keeping Torah for thousands of years. But let me show you something. They say that the Falasha Jews are converts and Hamites, right? I know you heard them say it. James Bruce. Who is James Bruce? James Bruce. How many of you have heard of this man here? James Bruce. Be honest. How many of you have heard of James Bruce? This European white man right here. It says James Bruce. It says December the 14th, 1730. And it says um, April the 27th, 1794. 1794. It says was a Scottish traveler and travel writer who spent more than a dozen years in North Africa and Ethiopia, where he traced the origins of the Blue Nile. So it says that he spent more than a dozen years in North Africa and Ethiopia. So now I want you to listen very closely to the commentator as he talk about James Bruce making contact with Beta Israel in, and they say around 1770 AD he made contact um with the the Jews in Ethiopia the Falasha or Beta Israel and he was a European Scottish traveler villagers in the Simeon Mountains of the Gondar region of Ethiopia call themselves Beta Israel, the House of Israel. They are the black Jews of Ethiopia and trace their lineage to the earliest days of the Bible. When James Bruce, the 18th century Scottish explorer, encountered them for the first time, he wrote, These are the ancient inhabitants of the mountain." who still preserve the manners and language of their ancestors. They are the only potters and masons of Abyssinia, and in this they excel greatly, and in general live better than the other Abyssinians, which in their revenge attribute to a skill in magic. To this day, the Ethiopian Jews are reputed by their superstitious neighbors to possess supernatural powers. Ethiopia and much of Africa, smithing is associated with sorcery. The Falashas, as the chief practitioners of this craft, are viewed suspiciously by other Ethiopians, who fear the Falashas can cast an evil eye or Buddha upon them. After the Ethiopian Jews lost their independence in a series of wars in the 16th and 17th centuries, they were banned from owning land and branded Falasha, or outcasts. Since that time, the Ethiopian Jews have relied on their skills as metal workers, weavers, and potters for their economic survival. How the Falashas acquired their metallurgical expertise is not really known. Possibly they learned from Yemenite Jews who crossed the narrow straits of the Red Sea to trade and live in early Ethiopia. Living in isolation for centuries, the Falashas thought they were the only surviving Jews in the world. Jacques Beitlevich was among the first European Jews to work for the preservation of the Falashas. Deeply impressed with their devotion to Judaism, he wrote, they adore a God of life, of righteousness and justice. Always in their thoughts, he inspires them with hope in a future of universal peace and harmony. In praying, they raise their souls to the infinite. They ask God to make Zion resplendent and to bring them back to Israel.
their cherished country. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 49 verse 12 in the KJV version. The King James version. It says, Behold, these or Jews, these Jews will come from afar. And lo, these will come from the north and from the west, which is West Africa. And these from the land of Sinim. Okay. So it, again, it says, And behold, these will come from afar. And lo, these will come from the north and from the west. Okay. And from the west. Now, this is the Septuagint version which is a more better translation. The Septuagint version says in Isaiah 49 and 12, Behold, these shall come from far, and these from the north and from the west, which is West Africa, and it says, and others from the land of the Persians. The land of the Persians is above the Tigris rivers and the Euphrates. And there are, there are many Jews today as we speak that still dwell above the Tigris and the Euphrates. And they are black as we speak. Black. Okay, black Jews still dwelling above the Tigris rivers. Now, this is a map here. You may have seen this before. This is a map. And you can see the red dot right here. That's Israel. So you can see that all of these lands, okay, or west, or west, you got Nigeria, which is uh, southwest, the red dot is east, and all the other lands like L Libya, uh, Mauritania, um, Nigeria, and also the country Chad, which uh, is a corruption of the word Ohad, okay, the word Ohad is a uh, Hebrew word in, in West Africa. You can find that name in West Africa, Ohad. So Chad is a corrupt, corruption of that word. So when Isaiah 49 and 12 says, and these shall come from the West, it is speaking about um, West Africa. Okay, so let me blow up this map here. In Google, you can see Israel right here. Okay, which is northeast of Africa. Uh, Ethiopia and Kush in Egypt is mainly uh, southeast uh, of Africa. Okay, but other lands are west. Okay, west of, uh, of Israel. West of Israel. Okay, you see Iraq. You can see the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers. And up north, you have Georgia, etc. So this is um, just to give you... Another look, uh, way over here you see the Persian Gulf and Iran, okay, which is mainly east or northeast. Okay, Iran is northeast. And uh, let's go back now. So you can see Israel, right? And you can see Egypt. You can see the Nile River, all right? So um, crossing the Nile River and the rivers of Ethiopia is West Africa. West Africa. That is why also it says in Zephaniah 3 and 10, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Okay, so uh, all of these lands are west. When you look at the map, they are west. Okay, west of Israel. West. And some are southwest. Southwest and west. Inside the book, The Jewish Travelers in the Middle Ages, Eldad the Danite wrote in 880 AD. Okay, 880 AD. Keep that in mind, 880 AD. He wrote that, he says right here on page 11, he says, and these tribes being Dan, the tribe of Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, they dwell in ancient Havilah, okay, where gold is and in goodly places, okay. But it says the tribe of Dan, he said, migrated first. And then right after the death of Sennacherib, he wrote that the tribe of Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, they also migrated to um, Ethiopia or Cush. And he wrote that the tribe of Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher lived side by side. When you continue to read, when you continue to read the story that they all lived side by side and they fought the surrounding uh, Cushite tribes constantly. 
Now, let's go to another Jewish traveler and let's see what he wrote. So now I'm on page um, 153. Now, this is another Jew, a real Jew, black Jew. His name was Elijah Ferreira. Elijah Ferreira. It says here, he, he dates back to 1434. Okay, 1434 AD. 554 years after El Dad Danite. Okay, keep that in mind. 554 years after El Dad the Danite. Now, El Dad said that the tribe of Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, they live side by side, right? In Ethiopia. By the, by, it says by Havilah. Okay, Havilah. Now, let's see if, uh, 554 years later, if, um, Elijah, also wrote the same thing when he visited Ethiopia. All of these early Jewish travelers, all they did was travel um, and visited different tribes throughout Africa and the middle, what we call the Middle East today. So now let's go see if he wrote the exact same thing that Eldad said. Eldad the Danite said some some um some. Some 554 years before. Let's see what he's saying right here. Now, remind you, again, this is 1434 AD. Okay, 1434. 554 years later. After El Dada Danite. Let's see if they still was dwelling beside each other. It says right here. Now, remind you, El Dada Danite was 880 AD. 880 AD. Okay, 880 AD. Okay, Elijah, 1434 A.D., 554 years later. Let's see if they were still living side by side 554 years later. It says here, And the children of Moses lived upon the island uh, situated, it says, near the river Sambatian, the same thing Ezra said, and the tribe of Manasseh lived opposite. Then it says, beyond this river, it says, are the tribes of Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The same exact thing that Eldad the Danite wrote. He said that the tribe of Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher were living side by side way back in 880 AD. 880 AD. 554 years later, in 1434 A.D., Elijah uh, came on the scene, Elijah Ferreira, and wrote the same thing. He visited them, the, these, G, these Jews, and they were still living side by side, 554 years later. Now you tell me, you tell me if these uh, Hispanics and Mexicans are Israelites. And you tell me if the Falasha Jews, and that was given that name as an insult, you tell me that the Beta Israel, okay, are not uh Hebrew Israelites. You a liar. They were speaking Hebrew. And so the next question that I have, do anybody know about this man here? He was a was a uh, a uh, em uh, emperor of Ethiopia. His name was uh, Yishak or Isaac in 1440 AD. Okay, about seven years after uh, the Jewish traveler Elijah Ferreira. Seven years after, in 1440 AD. Okay, this man here was the emperor of Ethiopia. Okay, seven years after. Now keep in mind. Again, Eldad the Danite was 880 AD. 554 years later, Elijah Ferreira, he came on the scene and visited the Jews and the tribe of Dan, Gad, Natali, and Asher. They were still living in the same location. And this emperor here, he was about 26 years before, okay, before Elijah. The Jewish traveler Elijah. 26 years before him. So it says here, Yishak or Isaac, it says right here, uh, 
the throne name Gabra, etc., his throne name, it says, was the emperor of Ethiopia. You see that? The emperor of Ethiopia from 1440 through 29, it says it, that he was a member of the house of Solomon. Okay, Solomon. And he was the second son. Okay, the second son of Emperor Dawit, the first. Okay, so this man was the emperor of Ethiopia. In 1414 through 1429. Okay, so he was before uh, Elijah. Okay, he was before Elijah and after Eldad the Danite. So when you're dealing with timeline, he was after Eldad the Danite and a little before um, the other Jewish traveler, Elijah Ferreira. But look what it says here. It says that Yishak or Isaac reign was marked by a revolt of beta israel by a revolt revolt of beta israel showing you that even back when he was the emperor okay the beta israel were still keeping the torah but he was trying to convert them okay so it says again that yishak or isaac reign was marked by a revolt of the Beta Israel. It says in response. The emperor marched into. Uh, Wegera. Wegera. Okay that was a, ter a territory of Beta Israel. But showing you. That even back then. They was keeping Torah. Before the year. So as you can see. Nobody converted. Beta Israel. Now. Let's fast forward. Let us fast forward. Okay, to the year of 1867. Okay, about 400, roughly 400 and some change years later, after, um, after um the Emperor Isaac and or Yishak and and um Elijah, the other traveler, the Jewish traveler, some 420 plus years later. Now this time, this traveler was a convert. European Jew named Joseph Halevi. Okay, he was a convert and a Jewish uh, organization. They sent Joseph Halevi to Ethiopia to investigate Beta Israel. Now it said it says that when he got down to Ethiopia, he was astonished to see Beta Israel keeping Torah. Okay, and this was this was 1867, 1867, some 400, 400 plus years later after the Jewish traveler for uh, Elijah Ferrer and um, the, the Ethiopian uh, emperor, Yishak or Isaac. Okay, 1867, he went down to Ethiopia to investigate. And the Jewish world knew almost nothing of Beta Israel. Over the centuries, scattered reports told of Jewish tribes living beyond the mythical Sambation River, of a remote African land inhabited by the ten lost tribes of Israel. Around 1775, Scottish explorer James Bruce reported the existence of Jews in Ethiopia. In the mid-19th century, French researcher Antoine Dabadie reported meeting Torah-observant black Jews. But real contact came only in 1867, when the French Kol Yisrael Havarim organization sent Professor Yosef Halevi to investigate Jewish life in Ethiopia. When the famous Jewish scholar Halevi made his epic journey to Ethiopia in the 1860s, he was astounded to find that the Ethiopian Jews had maintained the Jewish lunar calendar precisely throughout the centuries, and that their religious observances coincided exactly with the religious holidays held by Jews around the world. In fact, he discovered an ancient Jewish people strictly observing the tenets of the Torah, the bedrock of the Jewish faith. The people prayed in Gaiz, an ancient Semitic language now almost extinct and today only used in religious services. In this rare film clip, the Kessis are leading the people in the observance of this Seged. 
So as you can clearly see, no European converted no black Jews in Ethiopia. Okay? They were keeping Torah, okay, since the 10 tribes migrated to Cush. And this is why also uh, God told Isaiah to write in Isaiah 11 and 11, okay, uh, that, that his people were scattered in Cush, Ethiopia. If God said that his people are scattered in Ethiopia, then who is his people? Who is his people? They cannot be Hamites. But I want to leave you guys with one more scripture here. Back inside my Abrahamic faith Bible, this is the book of Psalms 87. Let me prove to you even further, even King David prophesied that the Jews will be in Ethiopia. This is Psalms 87, verse 4. In fact, let me start at verse um, verse 3 and 4. It says here, it says, Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of Elohim, Selah. Verse 4. In fact, let me, let me read verse 3 one more time. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of Elohim, Selah. Verse 4. I, God, God says, or Yahweh, or Yah, he says, I will make mention of Rahab in, in, in the KJV. It says Rahab and Rahab is Egypt. Another name for Egypt. I will make mention of Rahab or Rahab in your KJV. And it says, and Babylon and to them that know me. God says, behold, Philistia and Tyre and Cush, it says Sudan, okay, and Cush, Sudan, God says, this man was born there. This man was born there. In other words, King David is prophesying in, in a later, a later future, okay, okay, uh, he's prophesying that the Jews will be born in Egypt, will be born in Babylon, will be born in Philistia, Tyre, and it says, and Cush. It says, with Cush and Sudan. It says that this man was born there. That this man was born there. So David even prophesied that the Jews will be born in these lands. So with that, I say grace and peace be unto you all. Uh, you can clearly see that Beta Israel, okay, was keeping Torah, okay, long before the white man even even got there, long before um, Joseph Halevi even uh, went down to Cush to investigate, and it said that he was astonished to see Beta Israel keeping Torah.
This is the Beta Israel community, descended from one of the lost tribes of Israel. For thousands of years, they held on to their Jewish tradition in Ethiopia, celebrating the Sigd, a holiday symbolizing the acceptance of the Jewish covenant on Mount Sinai. In the 80s and 90s, their prayers were answered. Even though most of the Ethiopian Jews have returned to what they see as their biblical home, they continue to celebrate the Sigt holiday. This year, all of Israel celebrated with them. 